Uh, Benoît Mag is my name, okay. Um, since I thought everybody here would know all the HP calculators in history, I thought I'd br bring some different stuff, including that contraption here, which is called an RPN 1200. Um, basically what it is, and let me show you, is... Yeah. Uh, let me open here. Okay, uh, let me show you what it is, and I'll pass it around. Basically, what, what I wanted to do is, um, this is actually my first calculator before the HP 25. Um, uh, my dad's company had many of them for their customers, and some of them were returned because they didn't work, and actually all you took was change the battery. So, so that was my first, and, um, and you can still buy them on eBay or Etsy for $12, $15, so they're easy, easy to find. And I thought, hey, well, how about modify it and uh, make it something a little bit more interesting, an RPM calculator is handy. <coughs> so I'll pass it around, uh, you can turn it on here, uh, you'll see RPM 1200 be, uh, written on the display and then you can play uh, after pressing any key, do whatever you want. Here you go. Thank you. It emulates uh, uh, two shift keys by pressing it once or twice. Yeah. So, so very briefly, what's, uh, I'll come to uh, what it does and, um, and how it's made. And uh, that's the only one, and uh, the software was lost, the hard disk drive crashed, and the software to run it was developed in a folder that, that was not in my backup sequence, so I don't, I'll have to redo it. Uh, but anyway, so it's a scientific calculator. Um, the, it has um, conversions uh, between different units, uh, trig functions, log, inverse, square root, you know, the usual. Um, pi conversion to, uh, to radians. Uh, all the sine cosines or uh, the unit uh, for the angle is radiant. It has 20 memories from R0 to R9 and R.0 to R.9 with store and recall arith arithmetic. So you can do store plus two or recall plus nine or stuff like that. So, yeah, so that's before and after. Um, if you're interested, I'll just um, show you the guts of it and describe a little bit um, uh, what's, what the chips are. So there's not so much space in it. That's the battery, 9 volts. So you have a little bit of space here. And um, the display needs to be at a certain angle, a certain distance, so that it actually fits behind the red um, transparent plastic. Uh, there are only two chips. I'll come to that. This one is a MAX 7219, it's an LED driver, it can drive eight digits. And uh, so the seven segments plus the dots, and eight digits, so eight times, times um, eight of these. And the input to it is only three lines. So it's very good because you can address the whole display with only three input output lines from the microchip. And Here's the processor, it's a microchip PIC, so I don't know if you're familiar with those. They have a huge range of products. They start from eight pins, very simple ones, to uh, 40 pins and more. And the one I used was uh, a mid-series, it's the 18F2550. Um, it has 32K words of uh, flash memory, some EEPROM in there, uh, some RAM, and uh, you can, um, uh, program it with an IDE, it's called MPLAB X, it's available for download, it's free for the non-optimized version. And if you buy um, a programmer for the chip, you plug it into your PC and you can flash that MPU just very easily. And then put it in the socket here and try, and it doesn't work, try again, debug and so on. So that's really all there is to it. The, these two chips, that's a Radio Shack or Fry's uh, pre pre um, uh, pre routed PCB, so it's not a specific PCB, um, and um, that's that's all there is. Um, the, if you want it, uh, I have the um, documentation as well. Like for example, for the uh, uh, the Max seventy two nineteen. So um, at least the pin layout. So, but that's what it is. It can drive eight, uh, seven segments plus dots. It's fed by five volts and three input lines here. That's it, very easy. 
and that's uh, the chip um, info. And if you wanted the and the microchip. Oops. Here. Okay. So I took the uh, the 20 pin. There's also a 40 pin with more input outputs, but this one is sufficient. Um, you have three input output ports, so I use a little bit more than one for the keyboard. It's scanning the keyboard. It's I think a five by four or six by four lines. So you need uh, nine or ten input lines, and then three for the display. So this this version was uh, suitable, and um, yep, that's it. So it was kind of fun project. Uh, the software is uh, C, programmed in C on the uh, MP Lab X, the software development kit from uh, from Microchip. Um, the uh, image of the software is about 15k words uh, of memory. And there are a few bits, like driving the display, driving the keyboard was in assembly, but it's just because these are you know, much easier to write in assembly. But uh, um, I don't know, if you're, if you're interested, I'll probably rework on it again to make it you know, again and better. Um, but uh, let me know if you're interested, and then we can exchange on that. Did you write the calculator application, or did you take something existing and port it into the hardware? I wrote everything. But you know, I use like for sine, cosine, I use the math.h, math.o from the, uh, the uh, software, so it was, it, it was not that, that big. But you had to manage yeah, the stack, uh, the different prefix, and so on, make sure you keep track of everything. 20 registers. Yeah, 20 registers of memory. The most annoying part was um, the entry buffer. Because you know you can start entering number, you can go back step, so not clear the whole thing, um, and that's a little bit tricky when you manage the dot particularly because it's not a separate input or output. The dot is part of the data; it's part of the digit. So if you add a dot, you have to go back to the previous digit you sent to the chip, the, the LED chip, and you resend it with the dot. And then if you go back, then you have to remove the dot. So it's you know, these little tricky things was, were a little bit, you know, uh, took a lot of time to debug, but aside from that, it was kind of fun. So. Thank you.